thank you very much. Thank you for all this uh, uh, excellent presentation. As I, as I guess, I was very happy to discover all the uh, activities. Uh, it, I think we have time maybe just for one quick question, maybe two. Okay, we can take five. I, I ask if we can take maybe some five minutes more because I think there are so many elements that were say, but I'd like to open the floor if there is any uh, comment or question as we have the, the, the director of the European Environmental Agency. Hi, I have a question for you, uh, uh, Hans, I think it's it. I'm, 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 my name is Teresa, I'm the director of the Dutch Geological Survey, and I heard you say in your presentation that uh, for um, governance for the subsurface and, 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 uh, and at actually spatial planning, subsurface spatial planning, you were looking uh, for the uh, ATH in Zurich to do stuff together. And I was super surprised about it because there's a lot of legislation in the individual countries which is uh, governing the subsurface. So I was just really curious what you were after, or what you're looking for. We, uh, thanks for the question. We, we didn't ask them to do it. We were organizing a scientific seminar at ATH with our European Environment Agency scientific committee and uh, we uh, they hosted it and we of course made use of their uh, uh, geology expertise to speak to it and indeed there is quite a bit of uh, governance in some countries but there are also serious lacks there is a serious lack of uh, information on it there is a serious lack of deal instruments that deal with the increasingly competing uses of the underground and probably there is also a assessments of uses of the underground i'm saying that as a non-geologist but those were the outcomes of the seminar that we uh, we organized so uh, our conclusion was that probably better uh, european um, and that's what what i saw in some of of the presentations here sharing of information but then bringing uh, your type of information to those who have to set the rules that are the governance rules which cannot be set by by you I mean governance rules are at the end of the day choices that are made between political and economic actors trade-offs are involved distributional issues play financial issues play that that information could be a lot better and more harmonized that was the outcome of our seminar we have a paper on that I would really love to talk to you a little bit more about it because in the Netherlands, the environmental agency is not responsible for it. So in that regard, you talk to the wrong part of the Netherlands for this issue. And maybe we, we, we can discuss it. We didn't even speak to uh, the Netherlands geological agency specifically. No, 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 but the RFEM is not. No, we will talk it later. But, uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. I see we have another question. Uh, if there is maybe a... Okay. Can? Okay. Please. I'm Marco Petita from International Association of Hydrogeologists. Thank you for your very comprehensive uh, presentation. It's very clear. I have a more technical question, but also strategic one. I was wondering if uh, you are uh, evaluating the possibility to share and avoid duplicate data between the EGDI and the EEA uh, databases of course, related to the same topics like groundwater, for example? Yes, obviously, that would be the goal of uh, collaborating under the next phase of an MOU, where we, you can put experts together and sort out what is missing and avoiding overlap, which is exactly what we do also with the colleagues at the JRC, uh, because yeah, that, that's what you need to avoid under conditions of scarce resources. What I hear from our colleagues is that uh, in our domain, which is more environment and climate monitoring, the established European legal frameworks, which mandate countries and tell them that they have to do monitoring and reporting, and we often make that uniform and we standardize that, and that those are uh, rather lacking in uh, some of the areas that we, you are working on, which leads to, and I heard that in some of the presentations, incomplete data sets, rather old data sets. Uh, so voila, that's a, an area where maybe we can, we can do some work together. 
Thank you very much. We have one first question here. Maybe we collect them so you can ask her at once. There is a second one there. And if we can take a third one. Very yes, um, I'm uh, Jacques Varé. I used to be head of the Juridical Survey and president of the Original Survey. But uh, earlier, I was working uh, in the Ministry of uh, Environment at the time uh, that was in the year of early 90s when the European Agency was established. And uh, we contributed to establish this uh, national four point point and created the Institut Français de l'Environnement. Uh, but what I discovered at that time is that uh, due to division of science, you, uh, the, the, the environment was considered for the biosphere and the atmosphere, but the geosphere was not part of the environment. <laughs> and I think we are facing this, uh, this question of uh, division of science, uh, which has uh, uh, prevented somehow geoscience to be part of the environment. And uh, I'm happy to see that uh, now we have this convergence between <laughs> your survey and the European Ag Agency uh, in order to uh, reincorporate, in fact, uh, geoscience in the environment because, of course, humanity is more and more, I mean, interfering with uh, subsurface, not living only at the, at the surface of the earth. And, uh, of course, uh, the subsurface is part of the environment. Thank you. Thank you very much. We take the last two questions for the microphone. One was here and uh, another one here. Uh, Andres? Uh, yeah, not, not a question, not but actually an additional comment to what uh, Marco's uh, question, asking how we ensure that, that we do not uh, produce some of the same information in EGDI and, and, and at the EEA. And we have actually had uh, within the water resources and among the water resources and our spatial information expert group meetings with uh, the colleagues at, at the EEA discussing our common interests and, and, and uh, how to make sure that, that, that we support each other and, and in, in the data uh, visualization and, and sharing. Thank you. Last but not the least. Thank you, uh, Karl Hangoy from British Geological Survey. I don't have a question either, I have a comment. I think, thank you very much for a great keynote, but also thank you so much to the chairs of the expert groups. I think that sort of a time to reflect a little bit on what the expert groups actually do for EGS. I think that is truly the backbone of EGS, and it is a fantastic example of, uh, of synergy across Europe, bringing together not the directors, it's great that we get together too, but, but actually it's the machine room of EGS and of all of the, of the geological surveys and a huge asset for us because it's an asset as, as a group, as, as a group of experts, but it's also an asset for us to grow the skills and the networks of our own surveys. So a huge thank you to the chairs of the expert groups for, uh, for empowering all of us uh, with all of you great work thank you okay. thank you very much and i think this can, is a very good I, way Nic to close Nicola, this session Nicola, to thank so can, can i add some i i was listening to all of you and uh, w when i said in my talk that you're maybe representing a field of science that is not so much known also maybe not to high school students who need to make a choice i've got an 11th grade stem uh, daughter and I will definitely talk to her about geology now more than I, I would probably <laughs> have mentioned it and if, if there was any uh, sort of message of we are now serving a common cause which I don't think in 92 was the case so much it you made it explicit so thank thank you also from my side from uh, for your uh, great presentations <laughs>